In this video, I will provide you with an example of how you can build a roof and a ceiling like this where you have two different pitches, a 8 and 12 pitch on the top, 4 and 12 on the bottom, and a supporting beam in the center. So remember, we're going to have a cathedral ceiling, so we're going to need some type of a supporting beam since we're not going to be using rafter ties. So here we go. 2x8s on the top, 2x8 rafters, 2x6 ceiling joists. This is a 12x12 12 12 building with support posts underneath the ridge beam for the ceiling and of course the ridge for the roof rafters. Let's remove that section. Take a look at the first section that will need to be built. And I guess you could build this. Uh, you could build the upper section first for something like this. Take a look at the ceiling rafter. You can see that it's on the inside of the wall. This is going to be used for drywall backing or plaster backing and will need to be located accordingly. It doesn't need to be located on the outside of the building, but the roof rafters will need to be so that you can put your uh, gable studs in there. Now, I do want to point something out here. If you are going to put a ridge vent uh, gable vent in here, then you might need to push the supporting stud back a little bit, uh, as you can see in the picture. I think most uh, gable vents are about two inches, maybe an inch and a half wide. Um, you could pull this back a little bit to allow for that. Um, and of course, you can always extend some of the material for the gable studs if you want to make it a little stronger. Instead of doing something like this, you could put something like this and then end nail it into the rafter. Now I left this situation like this to give you an idea of what you might not want to do. You can do it, but I would rather see a larger board in here. You know, if you're using a four by beam, put a four by four in here. That way you can nail the gable studs to it and you'll still get the support that you need for the ridge. Take a look at it from the other side. But again, make this a full piece. Whatever the width of the beam is, put something in here. Now you might or might not need braces. Um, if you're building something like a 12 foot by 12 foot building, I would definitely brace this off. And um, if you don't know whether or not you need braces, I would put them in there. Um, you just might not need to install braces if it is a smaller building like this connected to a larger one where you have more support or something that's going to prevent these from moving. And of course, that's what these braces are going to be used for is to prevent the roof or the ceiling from moving right to left or not right to left here, but from moving forward and backwards in the illustration that I have. Now, if you have a ridge beam that's wider on the bottom or the top, then you will have to angle the brace, as you can see here. If they are the same size, you won't have to. And of course, put uh, probably four 16D nails at the bottom four at the top and a few to connect your other supporting board. Now, whether or not you need this one here, I'll leave that up to you. This is just how we used to do it all the time when we were cutting braces in. One at each end, of course, will be beneficial. And you could always put more in here if you want, but uh, one at each end. Now, I wanted to give you another view of the ceiling rafter here to give you an idea how it's going to nail up against the wall gable studs. And of course, it will not be on the outside. It won't be connected to this rafter. It will be on the inside, as you can see here, for ceiling backing. And of course, the gable studs to finish the end. And that is the end of this particular project. Now, I am going to make a couple of more videos and I will put links to them either here or at the end of the video when they are made.